the financial conditions that we have in our country and the responsibility that we have as, as the lawmakers. This inflation is real. It's harming people. It's 7.5 percent. That's a tax. And it continues to increase. It's not decreasing. So the feds have to step up to the plate and do something. The administration has to do. We all have to work together right now to get our financial house in order. If not, it's going to be absolutely horrible what it's going to do to the American economy. So it has been approved, everybody. President Biden is moving forward with new legislation that will provide extra financial assistance to millions of people, especially those on low income. So in an effort to keep up with record-breaking inflation, the Social Security Administration announced its biggest cost of living adjustment in more than four decades. The 2023 COLA is 8.7%, meaning that the average Social Security check will increase by around $140 beginning next year. And though 8.7% is a historic high adjustment and the highest since 1980 when the COLA was 14%, you may be wondering if this is enough to match inflation. While economists told reporters that we believe the social security cost of living adjustment will go a long way in reducing the sting associated with rising inflation that retirees have experienced over the past 12 months, however, it may not be enough for everybody. Despite the rise in the cost of living, it's important to keep in mind that the way retirees experience these price changes is unique to their personal situation. There are a few factors that play a role in whether the new COLA is enough to keep up with inflation. One of them is mortgage. According to Yahoo News, a retiree without a mortgage or with a fixed mortgage may not feel a pinch of rising housing costs in a way that a renter might. Housing plays a large role in determining a client's monthly fixed expenses and retirement and low interest rates have brought about many changes to the housing markets over the past several months. And location will also play an important role as we head into the winter months. Colder climates will likely feel the pinch of rising energy costs, while urban residents may absorb higher expenses than those retirees located in more rural areas. And there are other financial experts that are convinced that the new COLA will be enough to match inflation. A financial advisor told Nahu News that COLA fa fails to sufficiently keep up with inflation, despite the fact that they, by nature, COLA is indeed designed to keep up with present inflation. There will be an 8.7% increase for Social Security recipients. However, the 87 increase in CPI happened in the previous year, and recipients are only collecting their 8.7% increase from 2023 and beyond. And also, President Biden announced a crackdown on so-called junk fees, including new steps that effectively ban banks from issuing surprise overdraft fees and deposit fees on bounce checks. His speech announcing the new actions also highlighted his administration's effort to provide more breathing room and relief to consumers. This comes as the economy and inflation remain top concern to voters voting before the midterm elections. President Biden said today that my administration is announcing new actions to lower the cost of everyday living for American families, to put more money into pockets of middle income and working class Americans, and to hold big corporations accountable. Biden pointed to hidden fees like overdraft fees, hidden hotel booking fees, and termination changes when consumers switch cable and internet plans. He said that the new move on on junk fees will immediately start saving Americans collectively billions of dollars in unfair fees, and that he has directed his administration to reduce or even eliminate the junk fees. Specifically, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau is issuing new guidance publicly relaying that deposit fee and surprise overdraft fee practices are likely unfair under the existing law. Analysts, everybody, have also said the new guidance signals the agency plans to lean heavily on enforcement instead of the lengthy rulemaking process when it comes to baking fees. And now the economy and inflation are issuing issues at the front of voters' minds in battleground states. And along with acknowledging Americans' frustrations about the state of the economy, President Biden has deployed a midterm campaign message aimed at differentiating what he says are the savings in Democrats' policy plans from Republican costly proposals. Not only that, folks, but listen to this. You know, what do you think about just yesterday, Speaker Pelosi doubled down, and well, tripled or quadrupled down, I guess, on Build Back Better would help fight inflation? This is not a time to be throwing more fuel on the fire. We have, an infl we have uh, inflation, and we have basically uh, an economy that's on fire. You don't throw more fuel on the fire that's already on fire, causing the problems that we have. So we've got to get our house in order. And it's all about 
the economy, and it's about the inflation that we're dealing with, and it's about how do you restrain yourself from continuing to throw more fire, more fuel to the fire. So on today's hearing, we're, there's some concern that we're going to get more reliant on raw minerals that this country may not have the more we go toward green, like electric vehicles. Well, let me just tell you this. I've been very much concerned about that, and I have said I am not going to vote with my vote. I'm not going to vote to put our country in a situation where we're going to be dependent on foreign supply chains for the fuel that we need and how we run our economy. I'm just not going to do it. And you can't throw caution to the wind. We're the greatest nation on earth. We will hear from the ranking member of the subcommittee, our Republican whip, uh, for his opening statement. Mr. Tiff. Thank you, Chairman Lujan, for holding what I think is a very timely hearing. Um, in 22 legislative calendar days, the FCC's authority to conduct spectrum auction expires. And yet the last time this committee held any hearings related to spectrum management was in July 2020 when I was serving as the chairman of the subcommittee. So while I have been disappointed in the lack of progress on this issue, I hope moving forward we can work collaboratively. We all know that Spectrum is the lifeblood of wireless communication. Many people can expect to receive a one-time stimulus relief payment, everybody. Up to $1,000 in crisis relief money is currently available to be claimed right now, and so, and so some of you may have to take action before you can receive this extra cash. Now, with inflation eating into U.S. spending, more state officials and lawmakers are looking for ways to get money into the hands of residents. More than a dozen states are set to distribute money to residents with many short-up household finances. Caregivers in New Jersey will soon receive payments of $1,000 as a result of a program intended to help those whose wages have been impacted by the crisis. According to a new press release, recipients will receive a one-time $1,000 payment and relief funds for their hardship stemming from the crisis. The commissioner, Ed McDonald, told reporters, the crisis has had a severe impact on all of our lives in most industries throughout the United States. One of the hardest hit fields was caregiving as staff were on the front lines for keeping clients and loved ones safe seven days a week. Our hope is that these funds provide some relief and support for those working incredibly important and difficult jobs. According to a Camden County Board of Commissioner, the grants are part of the more than $60 million in federal funds. The Board of Commissioners made available to different hard-hit sectors of the community, including rental assistance and grants for nonprofit organizations and small businesses. Millions qualified in Georgia will also see $350 direct payments in just a week. According to the governor, the checks will be mailed out to people in Georgia who benefit from Medicaid, subsidized child health insurance and food stamps, or cash welfare assistance. The White House sent about a billion dollars to the state during the crisis as part of the American Rescue Plan, and the cash is still being used to fund the relief program. If you're eligible, the state is urging you to update your personal details ahead of the payout. According to Katie Bird, a spokesperson for the governor's office, payments will be deposited automatically from September. Delaware is also providing $300 per adult resident. The 2022 Delaware Relief Rebate Program was just created by the House Bill 360. The legislation called a relief rebate, which is a one-time direct payment of $300 per adult to Delaware residents. The relief is intended to help people in Delaware facing higher prices at their grocery store and gas pump. The Delaware Department of Finance has already issued one-time payments of $300 to individuals. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, next, recognize uh, Senator Fisher. Uh, Senator.